$450 billion to exit US banks as the treasury kicks off massive borrowing spree. At the same time, we've got economist Steve Hank warning of an ugly recession looming and accuses the Federal Reserve of directionless policies, which is interesting. But that's not the only thing. As I've been saying, things are getting absolutely crazy in US politics, world economics, and specifically in crypto, with apparently over in the United States, Bitcoin supply plunging over 10% and the Asian markets winning big. Obviously, this is not too illogical as the United States is completely against crypto it seems, while over in Asia, well, they're very accepting, where Hong Kong even urged the banks to try and accept more crypto, at least crypto options, let's call it. When we're saying the US is against crypto, it's not universal. No, no, no. For example, take a look at this article right here. Ex-JP Banker, or JP Morgan Banker, says cryptocurrency is a long-term investment opportunity. Now, this is, again, quite obvious, as you can't always, in any one of these industries, you can't always have everybody against something. It just doesn't work that way. But before we move on, guys, make sure you press that like button. You don't have to, but it's very much appreciated. At the same time, Peter Schiff says the US dollar's decline will be far greater than Yellen actually warned for. And Chair Jerome Powell is actually clearly worried about the financial crisis. But to that, I'll say whatever he shows, whatever he says, you can't really take any word of it. Remember, guys, Christine Lagarde of the ECB said, a half a year ago or so, no recession will be coming for the Eurozone. What happened a couple months later? Recession for the Eurozone. While well, they look at you straight in the face and say it's not going to happen, it happens. So I don't really trust their words in that way. And the same thing applies for their policy and the fact that, you know, more banks were all are going to be fine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Robert Kiyosaki is warning more banks are about to fail. Now, as I said, he's a perma bull. I think he's also a BSer, so to speak. I think he's just an author um, in the sense that he likes to sell books. He likes to sell things and then act out authority because he can sell. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's the best investor in that department, but, or at, at least let's call it an investment advisor. Uh, but he has a point in the sense of, it looks like more banks are going to be failing. It looks like this can't hold up. And it makes a lot of sense if you kind of add things together. Now, from the crypto perspective, I think the most interesting thing that happened was this right here. Mark Cuban trying to register crypto token with the SEC. But what happened? Apparently, investor Mark Cuban shared an interesting tale about his experience with the SEC when he tried to register a crypto token. Now, he basically said this was when Cuban tried to approach the SEC about finding the guidelines on how to register a crypto token. And with this, he had boiled down to the real reason why crypto firms find it really difficult to register with the agency. As things stand in terms of the rules, this could also make an interesting case for discussion with lawmakers on crypto as we head into the election here. Now, Cuban's experience showed that most of the companies in the crypto market would love to register with the SEC if the agency made it simpler to do so. Another important concern is the relatively high costs and delays when it comes to the registration timeline. According to Mark Cuban, Jerry Gensler does not understand three things about crypto and small businesses and startups. Difficulty with approval delay, legal fees, and complex rules. He added that he would bet almost all of the companies would love to register with the SEC if these issues are fixed. There are zero easy to follow guidelines for small crypto startups to follow. Quote, I had someone who I work with call the SEC and ask them about little side note. Let me actually s <laughs> let me actually show you what the view looks like. The, the, the lighting is a little bit messed up, but let's try this. Yeah, this is the, the best I can do because the lighting is, you know, kind of difficult. To continue though, this whole story here, it would probably actually not be that hard for the SEC to control the entire crypto space if they just really actively tried. I had someone who I work with at the SEC or with a call, the SEC and asked them about how to register a token, where could we find guidelines? They effectively told us we should probably get a securities lawyer to help. Now, that's not a way to go about it. You'd probably want somebody to register by finding it out on the SEC website. And if they want to do it for bigger corporations, etc., they probably should get a proper lawyer. But I, I presume it shouldn't be that hard to find the information about it. Um, that is that you are able to do it, not that it's going to be the most optimal way. There's a difference there. I think major companies like Coinbase probably couldn't find it out, you know, as a CEO or whatever, right? But that's fine. I'm talking about... What if I hypothetically speaking wanted to get the info, would it be there? Not would I be able to do it optimally? The inventor, investor, 
stressed on the need for legal help for startups with small capital, because otherwise, how can you do things perfect if you don't have you know, a couple million dollars to spend on legal? When it comes to registration and compliance, all the SEC needs to do is make it easy and relatively inexpensive for firms to register, he concluded. But yeah, that's not exactly what they're up to. I mean, Gary Gensler, as we've seen before, his job is at risk. <laughs> BlackRock's first Bitcoin spot ETF and other news. Now, his job is at risk mostly because of this new SEC Stabilization Act that Warrenson or Davidson, I should say, and uh, Tom Emmer, I believe, are both trying to go for, which would basically put him out of, the mi out of his misery, let's call it, and put a couple of other commissioners uh, in there. And also to disallow any one party in the U.S. to have too much position or too much power and all that. But I think his job could also be on fire because of guys like Mark Cuban, because of guys like BlackRock coming in hot. With regards to the Ripple lawsuit, um, crypto law experts engage in speculation as Ripple lawsuit nears climax. The whole story here is just the more that time continues on, the more people are starting to notice that things are moving in an interesting fashion. And the probabilities of Ripple winning outright, just everything victory, 100%, is getting smaller and smaller. That's what a lot of lawyers are saying. Uh, for example, Mark Fagel said a little bit earlier, we, we talked about this entire discussion, right? We talked about why there's delays, why she's not making a choice. And Mr. Huber had some comments about, you know, the longer she waits, what could that uh -oh, be meaning? And Mark Fagel started to say, ah, well, you know, we can't really extrapolate too much. Last thing he said was, I don't have any guesses on something I can't see because I'm blocked, apparently. Uh, I, I think the fact that she's unsealing materials that, if relevant at all, will only come out at trial rather than at some judgment, like the speech materials, suggests at least some of this is headed for trial. Beyond that is speculation. And now... As a response, another lawyer, Bill Morgan, said, I agree with you, Mark. Some of the matter goes to trial. Neither party will win entirely at summary judgment. And to that, Balaz asked, My biggest concern is if the judge rules on secondary market sales. That is what really matters to us. XRP holders, what's your take? And he said, My concern is she doesn't rule on secondary market sales. The matter or most of it goes to trial. And the issue of whether XRP is a security remains uncertain for another year. I don't expect that to transpire, but it could. The point being... Even though, as I've said before, things are moving faster and a lot more in Ripple's favor, uh, even though, oh no, let's rephrase that. Things are moving a lot more in Ripple's favor because of the SEC attacking multiple parties, because now the SEC's got more on their hands. Now there's more eyes on anything the SEC has done and said, and it's just starting to be noticed by other lawyers, other judges, everybody around, like Mark Cuban, BlackRock, etc., that the rules just really aren't fair and that things are moving in a really strange fashion. But on an opposite side, and this should also be taken quite harshly, Whatever decision is made in Ripple lawsuit now has so much more importance, at least uh, uh, like in their heads, right? The judge before had to basically put this out for 100,000 people. Right now, it's all of a sudden, in a couple of weeks of change, in front of a couple million people that are really watching this very closely. It's a lot scarier. It's a lot more prone to make a single mistake that could wreck an entire trillion-dollar industry, so to speak. Um, Binance US made a burdensome deal with the SEC, former SEC official says. We know about the deal, we talked about it yesterday, but apparently the agreement is unprecedented, exhaustive, and onerous, declares a former SEC enforcement chief. <laughs> well, as I've stated before, guys, I think this Mr. John Reed Stark, whom I've had a discussion with, an ex-SEC uh, member, I don't think we, we, we can go through the same door, you know? We're completely on opposite sides on almost anything. Cybersecurity consultant and former chief of the SEC Office of Internet Enforcement called the agreement unprecedented, exhaustive, and onerous. Quote, this consent order will be one of the most burdensome, awkward, inconvenient, and far-reaching crypto-related orders in the SEC history, Stark observed on Twitter. The SEC has been given a role akin to a Binance independent consultant. Uh, with the agreement, by the way, it gives the... Um, oh, sorry. Actually, actually, I don't think I finished this all the way. The SEC has been given a role akin to a Binance independent consultant, a remedy often granted to the SEC after the SEC prevails in an enforcement action. The agreement gives Binance 45 days to provide to the SEC a list of every account or wallet under its management since December 1st, 2022. Along with associated financial institutions and account numbers, Binance must also produce a record of asset transfers greater than $1,000 in value in the same time period, along with recipient names and reason for the transfer, which... That is quite difficult to, to, to get a good list on. As for the SEC's concerns over Binance U.S. solvency, the agreement demands, and again, I don't think Binance U.S. is insolvent at all, uh, but they basically want more and more info and must also make sure that no access or control of assets is given to Binance, its CEO, or any Zhao-owned company or controlled entity. Uh, 
Anyway, to continue on, because there's too much stuff to cover, Tether apparently used Chinese securities to back its top stablecoin of filing reveals. More and more things are coming to light, you know, and potentially somebody was trying to manipulate Tether uh, based on the idea that they found out this news, and so they were able to do something with it. Uh, the market didn't react the way they thought because Tether bounced back rather quickly instead of going down further. I don't fully know. But like I've been saying, the situation in crypto is quite interesting because the SEC is making things really, really difficult. At the same time, though, because of the SEC strange approaches, I think, uh, a lot of companies are left untreated where I think the SEC should be more, more on them. To rephrase that, I personally think if the SEC did a better job, cryptocurrency holders would be a lot safer. But also just general investors because... Well, you'd have less of the FTX type of endeavors, which is why I'm not against them requesting information from guys like Binance, etc. Because at the end of the day, that might keep protect, um, protecting the investors properly. What I am against is trying to shut them down or saying they can't operate or saying some really crazy requirements for them or something like that. But to say, hey, you know what? If you want to operate in my country, US, for example, you have to file all these different documents from the people. It might be, in my opinion, intrusive, sure, but it could protect the people. So I'm not fully against that. What I am once more against is saying you can't be trading this crypto, that crypto, that crypto, that crypto. You can't be uh, letting these people trade, which basically will be everybody. No, they can only trade if they got a million dollars, for example. All that stuff I think is too crazy. And like I've also been stating, I, I think the only way in which they can save their country is by adopting this crypto debacle. Um, the economist Peter Schiff also points out that the dollar's decline is just it's in a spiral and it, it's not looking to be saved anytime soon. If banks are failing to do bad, the dollar's just on the way down because they're not able to properly manage anything, really. Uh, Janet Yellen warned Americans to expect a decline in the dollar share of central bank reserves. A lot of countries are trying to join the BRICS alliance. A lot of countries are trying to reduce the reliance on the U.S. dollar dependency. But the decline will be far greater than she thinks as a result of both dollar depreciation and central bank selling. This pretends a significant decline in our standard of living. We have too much debt, Schiff told. And apparently Powell was also clearly worried about the evolving financial crisis, but doesn't want to spook markets. So he's done hiking, but doesn't want to admit it. You know, And that basically has to do with that they you know, don't want to save the market even more, even though they are basically scared of things just getting, quote unquote, worse if they stop hiking. And take a look again. Ex-JP Morgan banker says crypto is a long-term investment opportunity. Even at the banks, they know AI blockchain tech it's the future so this whole banking system is a little bit behind and they're not trying to adapt which again is relative because i do think they are actually adapting they're just telling you that they aren't um and once more over in the us right now a lot of money is flowing out but potentially that's what they want for right now maybe they have a, a bigger strategy than meets the eye again i think a lot more is manipulated than, than than we think steve hank an economist and professor at applied economics at john hopkins university as well as a former member of ronald reagan's council of economic advisors recently expressed his disbelief that the u.s federal reserve is lacking direction and doesn't know what it is doing could be right could they just be incompetent are they or is this all a little bit more of a plan? Hank further predicts a bleak economic downturn in 2024, referring to it as an ugly recession. And once more, it's all because apparently things are not doing well in the banking world, not doing well in the regulatory world, the cryptocurrency world. Finance in the U.S. is just in a bad spot. The analyst at uh, Morgan Creek said, Our fixed income team sees more of this initial Treasury General account restocking to come from bank reserves, suggesting $450 billion of gross outflows over the next four months. A reacceleration of deposit outflows would end that current intra-quarter bank stock bounce, and apparently everyone knows the flood is coming. Yields will move higher because of this flood, treasury bills will cheapen further, and this will put pressure on banks. The rise in yields could force banks to raise their deposit rates. And apparently, because everything looks so calm, it pervades markets that may not be sustainable. Volatility in equity rates and credit markets appears relatively contained and well below March levels. However, looking back to 2011, markets were also calm before the X date, but subsequently registered sharp moves. In the three weeks after the resolution, the S&P 500 fell by more than 12%. 10-year Treasury yields declined by 70 basis points, meaning prices for those securities went up. And high-yield bond index spreads widened by more than 160 basis points. Simply meaning we are a little bit screwed. <laughs> but yeah. Guys, if you're not done yet, make sure you put that notification bell on. I'm a little bit, you know, in the... 
I should put myself maybe right there. Because what if something crazy happens? What if the lawsuit is over tomorrow? What if the SC does something crazy? They sue somebody tomorrow. Who knows, right? You got to be notified for that. You can always just not press the video, even though you've got the notification button on. And uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.